Hey, Shelvies. Buckle up for a new episode of the Shelved Books Podcast, where every writer has a story that may never see the light of day. This is the podcast where authors share the stories that they shelved, the manuscripts that they may never publish. Then they explore the reason why they shelved this story. Welcome to the Shelved Books Podcast. Oh, so I was just wondering, how many projects are you working on at one time? Um, all right. So let me open a file. I okay. keep a spreadsheet of my projects uh, and I color coded it according to priority. <laughs> um, and right now on this spreadsheet, and I am noticing that there is one project not on here for some reason, um, but so I currently have 19 projects. <gasps> oh my list. gosh. No. Um, and at, so at the same time. I'm having a panic attack. I know. Okay. I so, well, let me, let me, let me, let me, so, uh, I have two that are, uh, level that are color coded red. And those are things that are either actively like, I have to keep writing Hunter Black. I don't have a choice. I've got a, a schedule. I've got readers. I've got, you know, thousands of pages up. I've got to keep going with that. So that's in the red. And the other is a, uh, a pre-K animated series that my team and I have in development that nice. we are about to, we are literally a week or two away from taking out to buyers. Um, then I have five projects that are colored orange, which are things that are in the pitching process. Um, so, uh, and <laughs> it's kind of, uh, so, um, one, but one is the comic book project that I'm working on right now that I am um, because I have a, people who are actively interested in it, you know, um, but there's no hard deadline. Oh. Um, one is another sample, another uh, animated pilot sample from my manager. Um, two are two more animated series that my partners and I are developing. Um, and actually the, the fifth is something that we, we had to, we were putting together a pitch package that combined other projects into something to send to a, a studio. Um, I have five projects on yellow, which are things that I'm like, ooh, these are things that I'm interested in. Oh. These are things that I could, that could move up to orange or red really fast all of a sudden. Oh. Um, and actually one of those is about to change to orange because it doesn't have a deadline, but it's a graphic novel project mm -hmm. that I've been hired to work on and I just got notes on. So all of a sudden it's live again. Okay. Um, uh, one is a comic books. Uh, another writer suggested to me that I do my own anthology comic to take some of my ideas and oh. do short comic stories for some of them and publish it and say, look, to, to help, get more companies to be like i'm interested to sort of a proof of concept book yeah. so i'm in the project of planning that out um and then i've got a half dozen projects in the green mm -hmm. which are things that are on the back burner that i've done a certain amount of work on but currently i'm not in a place to worry about them too much mm -hmm. um they are a, a handful of animated series that we've made pitch decks for and we can send out from time to time, but we're not actually doing any work on them. Oh. But but they could suddenly become projects that I work on. Oh. Um, so <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's panic that inducing. Yeah, that you have <laughs> yeah. the question that you're able to keep track of everything. I oh, I have to. Oh I have to because yeah. I put you know I, it, it's my spreadsheet is project priority format who the creative team is, the current status, what I have to do next, and when I have to do that next thing by. So mm. it helps me. It helps me a lot. It helps me you know, yeah. be focused and decide what I'm doing on a given day. Mm. Um, I, this is, but this is how I want it. I want to work on lots of things. Mm -hmm. I have, like I said, ideas are a dime a dozen and I come up with them all the time and there's new things. And I... I don't want to ignore any of them. You know what I mean? And so, you know, if I have an idea that's, that goes beyond um, just floating around in my head and I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to put some words on some paper. It mm -hmm. goes on the spreadsheet. 
And, and actually, there's a couple of things that I have to add to the spreadsheet. So it could be, it could be more. Please don't tell us. I'm going to get into hives. <laughs> it's, it's so different than writing novels, though, yes. you know, and I don't know that maybe I've never thought of myself as having like ADHD or anything, but maybe I don't know if I could focus on a project solely for so long. I, a, I think I would get bored. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I think, you know, like, so I, I would need at least, I would need at least three to four projects at any given time just to have palate cleansers. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I love pizza, but I can't eat it every meal. You right. Know? Um, that's the um, thing I was thinking is that, you know, with, um, with so many projects going on that I can see why you, Mask of the Dragon is like, okay, maybe not. Because you have a lot of other oh, yeah. things to focus on. I, I do have a lot. Um, and I have partners, you know what I mean, for a lot of these things. I mean, and and some of the stuff is uh, some of the stuff on my project list is work for hire stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's not it's not my baby. Um, so they're like IP projects where you, someone has an idea and then you, you're right. Uh, someone like I uh, I have a project, a comic book project that is on hold because the artist got sick mm -hmm. um but we'll get uh, he expects to start again by the end of march um but he hired me to write his story he had mm -hmm. an idea a concept and i took again and i took that and fleshed it out into you know a, a bigger story and mm -hmm. kind of zeroed in on the things that interested me about his concept and um and that's what i do a, a lot of the work for hire i do is people giving me ideas and me just doing the craftsmanship, you know, and, and I do, of course, it's impossible to take, to not take, to not add ideas to the, to the mix. It's impossible to take some, someone's one or two page idea and then turn that into a book and not have created a lot of stuff for it. But I mean, I really believe there's nothing new under the sun in terms of ideas. There's nothing new under the sun in terms of characters There are only so many stories you know there's cliches there's only six stories or only 12 yeah. stories or only 20 stories or whatever and okay regardless but so it's all about the way you tell it it's about the way you react to the times and for me it's all about emotional truth mm. you know and primal and 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 really digging into those things that affect people on the real level love hate fear need you know like if you're you, you know you got to engage those really strong four letter emotional things mm -hmm. to tell a story that's going to interest me you know yeah. what i mean either as a writer or as a as an audience member mm -hmm. um so, so and i like also that. love so many media you know yeah. i write prose i write comics i write film you know and that's a great thing. I think that's a great lesson to learn, I think, um, for novelists as well. It's like maybe it might help to jump projects. It's not necessarily like you have to just focus on one thing. Um, the entire Because I guess that's where writer's block comes in also. Because at some point, you're like, do I still want to continue this? Is it? I get it. But if you're juggling it maybe with something else, then there's something that engages your mind elsewhere so that once you start thinking of that project again, you have that freshness of, oh, I want to go back to this. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the only uh, set uh, setback there is, you know, the completion. <laughs> because yeah. you might end up starting way too many things. So how do you before I switch us to Christy's 10, 10 round uh, speed round questions, how but how do you uh, go from idea to completion with juggling so many projects at the same time? Um, I only put certain things on a completion track at a time. Oh. Um, and when I have, you know, 20 projects on a list, um, for example, um, I have on on this list. I have I have ten of them are animated sh TV shows, uh -huh. and so I'm not writing episodes of the show. I'm writing out concepts and building and doing. I'm doing world building and character creation and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to write 
episode, I might write a pilot just, you know, because people will say, oh, this is a cool idea. Do you have a pilot? And I like I, I like to be able to answer yes to that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, beyond that, I won't write more because then I'm writing just for fun. You know, there's mm-hmm. a limit to how much writing I'll do on spec. You know, mm-hmm. um, so really, how do I decide? Has a lot to do with who's paying me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I write, I write for money. <laughs> and, oh. uh, and the great thing, though, is sometimes writing for money becomes work. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, sometimes when you're on a deadline and you got and it becomes just and I love writing, but I can, I can hate it too sometimes, you know. Oh, oh, oh. Um, so having something else that I'm writing because I'm passionate about it. Mm can help jumpstart me. If I come to the computer in the day and I'm like, I don't feel like writing this, you know, I might start writing something else. I might spend an hour working on a different project to get my motor running, to get my brain engaged, to turn on all the lights. You know what I mean? And then I can go and work, you know, on something else. It's not often that I work on more than one project in a day, but it does happen. Well, Justin, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. It's definitely a different look into the creative process because it shows us we also have different avenues we can explore. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure the three of us have thought of a story that might look good as a comic, not necessarily just as a novel. And getting a glimpse of how that works in the industry-wise is also quite very important. Um, and knowing when a project is working and when it's not working and balancing all of that. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. So now I will shift to Christy and her speed round questions. Christy, take it away. Thank you. Okay, so top of your head answers. One word's fine. A paragraph is fine. However much you want to share with us is fine. Are you ready? I hope so. Yes. (laughs) Very simple, really simple. Number one is, would you prefer being the hero or the sidekick? The hero. Very cool. Yeah. Which object do you misplace the most? Uh, my wits. Um, <laughs> uh, I, object. Um, I guess my phone. Mm, you yeah. know, like, and you know, I, I have to say, almost once a week, babe, can you call my phone? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, I guess, you know, it, 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 I don't really lose much though. Like that doesn't really happen that often. Um. I I do live in a state of organized chaos, but I'm good. I function well. the The hardest time I have finding things is when my wife decides it's going to have a new place. Yes, you know, I do that is, to my husband too. <laughs> she's way more organized than I am, and she will decide. Oh, you know, the Tupperware goes here now, and I'm like, you know, so for sure. Number three is what is your favorite meal? Oh. I have several. Uh-huh. Um, We're all with bated breath. <laughs> um, if I could only have one food for the rest of my life and nutritional value was not a consideration, <laughs> I would have an Italian hoagie for the rest of my life. Oh. I'm from the Northeast. I'm from New Jersey. Okay. And I'm about a hoagie. I am about a hoagie in a way that's, you know, uh, so that said, that would be if it. I wanted something a little more highfalutin, my mom <laughs> always used to make, when I was a kid, she used to make this African peanut stew called mafe. Oh, it's, it's like tomato and, um, and peanut butter and chicken and like potatoes and cabbage and took carrots and onion and it doesn't sound any this is truly an example of greater of the whole being the greater than some of its parts it is tremendous i love it my wife my because my wife's mexican and maybe the kindest thing she ever did was learn how to make that so she can make Aww. it for me too um, <laughs> you know because that is definitely not served on a tortilla um <laughs> 
Although, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those two things are what would be least bring, but I love to eat. Look, I'm a eating machine. Mm. The only thing I don't like are bananas. I, I can, I will try. I have a philosophy with food in particular, which is I will try anything once mm. because if I don't like it, I never have to have it again. Mm. But if I do like it, I can like it for the rest of my life. Yes, mm, and you don't know what you're missing if you don't yeah. try it. So mm-hmm. for sure. Yep. Number four is, do you prefer a night in or a night out? Yes. <laughs> uh, I am I am a generally, I am, I'm a reader. So I can sit at home with a book or a TV show and just consume media and be by myself. I can do it with my wife. I can do it, you know, that's fine. I also worked as a bartender for many, many years. Mm. I am, I have no problem, as you guys can tell, I have no problem running my mouth. I can talk, <laughs> I can listen, I love people. Um, so I have no problem going out and being social. I, you know, the, the biggest obstacle is going from sweats to presentable. Because no one, no one ever wants to do that part of it. You know what I'm saying? But once I'm in the car, then I'm like, let's go. Let's go do some stuff. You know, so. I love it. Yeah, I like both. If money weren't an issue, where would you go on your next vacation? Oh, if money weren't an issue, my next vacation. 90 things popped into my head. I love to travel. <laughs> um I would go to Europe because I've never been to Europe. I would go probably to London or Paris. I know those are like boring choices, but they're places I just happen not to have been to, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've done the Island thing. I've been to Asia. I've been to Africa. I've been to the middle East, you know, um, I've been to Latin America, um, but I've never been to Europe. And so, yeah, I, I would probably like to go to, to Europe. I think that's a good choice for sure. Yeah, you could start at, in London and then train your Make way. Make your way. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Money's I, not I'm an issue. I'm not to, because I would be like, I need to go to London, Paris, and Rome. Those are the three places I most need to visit. Um, for, you know, just to see some shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Just like, uh-huh. I want to see some old buildings and I want to see some old artwork and mm-hmm. I want to see, you know, America's such a young country. Yeah. And I feel that whenever I travel in the States, um, I did get to go. I mean, I got to go see the pyramids, so I have seen some truly old things, but I love to see, I'm fascinated by people and places and culture and, you know, all that stuff. So I just, I could, yeah, but I can also, let me tell you something. There is no overrating the experience of a beach and an umbrella drink. You know what I'm saying? That <laughs> yeah. is, no, that is so never true. a bad time. So. And somebody serving you the umbrella drink. Yeah. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Um, the number six is, do you think you would be a good spy? A good spy? Yeah. I am six foot five and hairy. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to say that I stand out in the crowd. I have, it is not an exaggeration to say that I have been recognized randomly on the street on three continents. I am not famous. I am not famous at all. But I have bumped into people like, you know, like, I mean, literally, we were in a Costco in Hawaii and someone yelled my name and my wife was like, you have got to be kidding me. You know? It happened in Japan. It happened in Cape Town, South Africa. Like, it, it it's just... I am no, no, no. That's not no. happening. No, no, no. <laughs> no. The next one was formulated just for you. Hey. If a comic book were made of your life, which comic would you want it to be? Oh shit. Um. So you're saying what comic that currently is uh, that already exists mm-hmm. is most like my life, or if they were to make a comic of your life. Okay. Like that's the so, one you would want them to make it up with. That is not an easy question at all. <laughs> Sorry. I would say the it would probably there's a comic by it's it's really from the 80s although the, it still occasionally comes out called Concrete. Okay. Um and it's about a guy who gets abducted by aliens and has his brain transplanted into a body made of concrete. Oh. 
and then is left back on Earth. Oh, and wow. It's The story is not about the aliens at all. The story is about a guy in this huge body, a really thoughtful guy oh. in this huge body that affords him the opportunity because he's basically invulnerable. It affords him the opportunity to do all these adventurous things that he never would have tried on his own. Mm-hmm. But it also distances distances him from everyone. It makes intimacy impossible. Mm. And, you know, it creates... And, like, there is a certain element of having grown up in a dysfunctional family that kind of is sometimes isolating that I can relate to, you know? And I believe I just mentioned that I'm a big dude. (laughs) Um, And so, yeah, concrete. I like it. And I'm going to look that up Paul Chadwick. If you can find concrete, it is absolutely worth reading. Very cool. I'm definitely going to look that up. And now number eight is, which room in the house do you absolutely hate to clean? Any room in the house. (laughs) (laughs) I I may have mentioned that uh, I was a bartender. Uh And, you know, working in restaurants and bars involves a lot of cleaning. Mm -hmm. and i have done a lot of cleaning in my life so i you know i i don't i just i will never love a cleaning you know scrubbing (laughs) yeah it's just scrub stuff (laughs) um um and so yeah i don't really worry so much about uh the kitchen or the bathroom i don't love cleaning rooms bedrooms dining rooms you know Ooh. yeah no i get that number nine is if you could instantly be a star athlete in one sport which one would it be oh. this is a bad answer because no no bad answer well it's bad in the, <laughs> like i would want to be a football player cool i played yeah. football in high school i was mediocre i was i was decent enough i, I mean i made it onto a semi-pro team after oh. after college um, but then I couldn't stay because I got an opportunity to go to Africa, and I was like, "Well, I don't care that much about that." <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but I like football as a fan, you know. And I, I had this moment, and this is going to sound a little off topic, but it gets there. I was in, I was bartending, and I'd gotten this group of guys drunk, and I, I was escorting them out. You know, like it was time to close, and they were and they were friendly and they were happy. And they were so having such a good time that they picked me up, <gasps> and and I mean, it took a bunch of them, but they picked me up, and I was like, "This isn't going to go well." And, <laughs> and sure enough, we fell. Oh! <gasps> and I hit the ground. I hit the floor, and I had such a huge visceral memory of playing football oh. and being hit and hitting people, and like, you know, because I wasn't injured at all. You know what I mean? It was it was fine. I know how to fall, um, and. But I liked that. I liked, like, I like being able to throw pads on and feeling invincible, feeling like mm-hmm. you can't get hurt, and likely you're not going to hurt the guy next to you. So just you can just go all out and throw your body around and like. It, the thing about it is, you're not invincible. The guy across from you is not invincible. People do get hurt, and so I, you know, I don't love that part of football. But I loved playing football. I loved it. I think you have to be passionate about football to play it for sure. Oh yeah. You have yeah. to, you have to, you have to be a little crazy to play football. <laughs> and and, I, and I'm, I don't mean that in a disparaging way. No, 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 no. I, I yeah. get it. Number 10, your last one is, did you make a new year's resolution? And if so, how you kept it? Uh, I sort of, I, I pay lip service to making new year's resolutions, but no, I don't. Yeah. I don't really make them. And so I definitely don't really keep them. Um, <laughs> I would, I would like to shed some, some pounds. Um, mm. But I would also like another Italian hoagie, please. Um, <laughs> um, I, uh, and the, the closest I have done to maintaining my, the things I wanted to change the new year is my writing spreadsheet, actually. Mm. You know, I have been very good about updating that and, keeping things moving up and down, changing the color codes, keeping it up to date, knowing what I, you know, that, that has, cause it really has helped my life. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, you know, being a little more organized about my writing career because I do have a million things going on at any given moment. So. Well, thank you so much for answering those really. They were great. Sure. I'm sorry that I, I'm not so good at the one word answer. Sorry. <laughs> oh gosh, no, it's great. We love Absolutely that. Great. 
See, now I want the writing spreadsheet. I want the spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> I want my it's, coding. And I... <laughs> it's super, I mean, it's not hard. Mm. You, the thing about the, the writing spreadsheet is you have to have a lot of things to organize. Mm. I think, let me, can I ask you, and I don't know if this is something you will keep for the podcast, but are you guys all working on, on, on writing things right now? Are you guys all working on projects? Yep. Are you working on more than one? Mm -hmm. Two, though, not, yeah, not yeah. 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think before you even worry about a spreadsheet, I would challenge you to come up with an additional project that you don't oh. have a plan for, that you don't have a timeline on, but something that you, you kind of were like, I love this idea is fun. Maybe it's a little subversive. Maybe <laughs> it's something that, you know, it's something where you feel a new challenge. You know what I mean? Mm. But you're doing it because you like writing. And Ooh, I, I like think that. having that thing like that. will help your writing across the board. You know what? I'm going to do that and I'm going to call it my Justin project. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's my that. Justin project. Yeah. Yes. I think you know, that's don't, a great idea. Don't have expectations of it. Don't feel like make it something that you're doing because you it makes you happy to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. who knows what will happen? Maybe it'll yeah. give you ideas for your main project. I Maybe love it'll, that. you know, like, but like before you get the spreadsheet, have a reason to keep things organized, you know, yeah. but um, do something to keep your writing love a love, you know? Yeah, love that. I love that. Okay, everybody, let's put together our Justin projects. Yes. And <laughs> let us work on it. I, you know, I, I, I really I love this podcast for the for the main reason that having so many creatives on inspires us, invigorates yes. us, and rekindles that love of because like you, when I was growing up, I didn't think of writing as a career. I was reading, I didn't even think that the books I was reading came from someone who actually sat down and wrote it. I just thought, hey, this is cool. I'm reading it. It's a story. Yep. And then when it when it hit me, when it finally hit me that oh, people make careers of this. <laughs> that's when it's like, oh, maybe I can do it too. And so that kind of, you know, that but along the way, it's an up and down thing. It's a it's a hills and valleys, peaks and you know, you mm. have good days, bad days, and days where you just don't want to write, but then you gave us such a great idea of having yeah. having multiple projects is not a bad thing. It's being able to juggle them that you know is that something worth learning i think because you're right it helps you keep the love of what you're doing because sometimes when it becomes a job and you know how the sausage is made it's sort of like <laughs> why? <laughs> why i, I don't want to clock in you know yeah. you didn't become a writer to you know to do that you know yes. you you love it you love the creation and I, I would never say ignore your your works, you know. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that um it doesn't have to be all that. It doesn't have to be all work. You know, yeah. if you're lucky enough to make this a job, you should still have a chance to do it just for fun too. Yeah. You know? I love that. And and if that turns into something that you can make money off of, so much the better. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of which, where can they find you, Justin? Uh, well, you can find me at my website, uh, justinpeniston.com. Um, just Peniston is spelled quite regrettably. One N P E N I S T O N Justin Peniston. Um, uh, you can find me, you can find Hunter Black at hunterblackcomics.com. Mm -hmm. Um, or I have my own podcast, uh, with some people where we break down stories, um, usually on television shows and stuff like that called popsicle p and that's at p o p s k l p o d dot com mm -hmm. um and you should go watch sonic prime on netflix yeah. <laughs> and, and i will i will tell you my brother is a fan and he is tickled pink that you are you know with us right now and he, <laughs> i'm so glad i'm in a corner because he would be right here right now <laughs> <laughs> So it's good. I, there's no space for him to, you know, but yeah. <laughs> so he, because he loves anything Sonic, he loves. So, um, and it's, I'm, I'm just so happy that you're here. We're happy that you're here. Yeah. So what are you working, besides the 19 things, 
what is like something that uh, is immediate that we can um, expect from you in the future? Gosh. Um, so beyond Hunter Black, mm -hmm. um, I have a comic book project that I'm working on right now. Um, and I would expect that, that I have a lot of interest from publishers in. Uh, and I would expect if everything goes the way it's supposed to, that it will be in stores in early 2024. Nice. We're sending uh, that into the universe. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Universe, are you listening? <laughs> are you there, goddess me, Margaret? Um, <laughs> um, um, and so that is... It's a it's a project that combines several of my loves, you know, my love of ordinary person in extraordinary places like Flash Gordon or you know or Buck Rogers, uh, but also Lovecraftian horror. Mm, the price. Oh yeah, I do love I Lovecraftian know. horror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Yeah, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. So yeah, hopefully that. So will... I, so I, I, I would assume announcements for that would be on your Twitter, on your website. They right? will come. Oh yes, they will go to my Twitter. Um, you can follow me at Twitter at Hunter Black Com X. Mm. Um, you can find me on almost any social media platform under under that handle. Um, the question is, how often do I visit it? <laughs> <laughs> um. I find myself on social media less and less, which is not encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, but you can always reach me through justinpenniston.com or hunterblackcomics.com. Yes. So. Yeah, actually, your website is is so beautifully done. I, I I love it. And, you know, I think it speaks to having having spoken to you. It really does speak to your personality. Your website speaks to your personality, which is so good. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, I take, uh, that's a huge compliment because I had never built a website before. That was me on Wix plugging in, you know, it, it took me about six hours, six or eight hours to make that one day. And I, I'm proud of it. So I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Everybody, please go visit Justin's website, go read Hunter Black because I have started reading it and I'm like, <laughs> OMG. Okay, so please go, go, go. And I have, I, I, I'm going to add Popsicle because I, I love podcasts that break down stories and, and things like that. So I oh, will man. add that to my podcast list as well. Have you, um, if you have watched, here's what, you, here's why you should listen to Popsicle if you haven't before. If you are a fan of The Sandman or of Hannibal or of The Expanse, um we have done very in-depth breakdowns on those shows oh. and and also on the comic the sandman yeah. um we had some really fun interviews uh with jill thompson one of the artists from the sandman oh. with dirk mags who produced and directed the sandman audiobooks oh. or the audible audible series um with west chatham who played um amos burton on the expanse um, we've got some, we've had some really cool guests, um, and my podcast partners are hilarious and really smart, you know, cool. it's, so it, it's fun. You know, if you like, I, I would say check out Murder Husbands, which is our, our Hannibal podcast first. And <laughs> I think if you like that show, that's a good way to go. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely adding that. And, and what I heard from this whole con this whole part uh, ending part of this conversation is, am I a few steps away from Neil Gaiman? Is that it? Is is, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> I I <laughs> the closest you have gotten to Neil Gaiman from this conversation is he did once respond to one of my tweets. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> close enough. That's close. That's six <laughs> degrees of separation right there. <laughs> I know. I I seriously those. They are our goals, really. You know, I, I think I feel <laughs> like have goals. you yeah, you have like these the pantheon of heroes and gods that one day you hope to be able to not even be in the same room, but be in the same Zoom space. To be able to <laughs> I will say the maybe the luckiest part, because I haven't made a ton of money writing, but I've made some. But the the coolest part about my career has been that I have gotten to interact with a lot of my heroes. 
That's cool. And I've gotten, you know, some via social media, some in person. Uh, and some have, I've even been fortunate enough to work with. Um, I mean, I was a huge fan of the guys from Man of Action before I worked with them. Very cool. And they were, I mean, they are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And they're talented as hell. And they're super supportive. And like, you know, they say don't meet your heroes. And I suppose that's true in its way. But I've been very lucky. I've been very lucky. So I've gotten to meet some amazing same for Same for this podcast as well. Yeah. We have, we have, we're, we're, we're chipping away and meeting our heroes. And um, there were moments that I had to just have to pinch yourself and say, am I actually having a conversation with this? <laughs> oh, you know? So I'm just you right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's a great feeling. Justin, thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for sharing your insights. We have learned a lot. And definitely we will enact a lot of what you've said and shared with us today because it is interesting and something, a different way of, of going into the creative process. So thank you everybody, for me. yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do so. And then afterwards, like me, let's go visit, uh, let's go add Popsicle to our podcast list because, oh my gosh, I am <laughs> always happy to find something new to listen to. And um, also, if you can leave us a five-star review, we would love that. And if you have a story that you want to share with us or you just want to say hi, please email us at shellbrookspodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. So it's another episode down and next week tune in because we have another new episode for you that we cannot wait for you to listen to or watch on YouTube, whichever you may prefer. We are your hosts, Kate Evangelista, Angie Sandro, Christy Berman. And remember everybody, keep on writing. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Justin. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. And that was another episode of the Shelved Books Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Till the next one, stay safe, read more, write more, and continue to be at your creative best. The world is waiting, and so are we.